Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Focus on Liberia's premier program, On Point. I'm your co-host, uh, Jerome Gaiman. I am broadcasting live from South, beautiful South Florida. And my co-host from the beautiful country of Canada is uh, Mr. George Tooley. He is no stranger to the media and to a topic uh, that are of interest to Liberia. We have a special guest today that will be joining us today, our own Isaac Jackson. Everybody knows who Isaac Jackson is. He's a guy who has a lot of opinion, a very knowledgeable, and we we'll look forward to debating with him. Uh, today, we're going to have a very vibrant show. Before I turn it over to my boy and my friend and good brother, younger brother, uh, Mr. Two, let us look at the topics uh, we will be discussing today. We will be discussing first the opposition tickets. Uh, election is right around the corner, 2023. We are going to be looking at different combinations of uh, opponents from the CDC CAM and also from uh, the opposition. We are also going to be looking at a special event that occurred this week in Liberia. My own senator for Grand Bassa County suspended his chief of staff for expressing his opinion on things that he found to be very unethical in the Senate on behalf of his boss. Was she right? Was she tolerant? We are also going to be talking about President Weir. During his dedication ceremony, he said to the Liberian people, forgive me if I'm enthusiastic about sports and I'm always out there participating. It is part of my nature. I'm competitive. Is he right? Is he doing that because he needs favor? or because he's actually not a politician who is into a political space. I will turn this part over to my brother in Canada. Mr. George Tuller, take it over from there. Um, yeah, uh, it's a pleasure being here. Thank you, um, Jerome, Mr. Gayman. I really appreciate it. Um, this is another day that we have to really sit and discuss and deliberate on issues you know, pertaining to our country, Liberia. Um, the the topics that we have to discuss today are very, very, very interesting and very, very trendy, and we need to look into them. But I also pray that we we reserve time to be able to go into more substantive issues uh, in terms of advancing suggestions and looking at how things can get better in Liberia. Well, uh, this is why uh, you are one of the first opposition persons that I've always did, uh, loved to actually debate because not only are you critical of this government, it is your government, it is your country, but you are also very objective in areas of uh, postulating policies and suggestions. Hopefully we all can agree and disagree on some, but many of the things that you talked about are things that I think policymakers should look at uh, objectively, you know, so we should look at it when we talk about objectivity, when we are talking about being honest, when we are talking about calling the opposition to the table. It may not be uh, the head of a political party or a head of a, an opposing view, but from regular folks like you and myself who have more to fry, more fish to fry in this case than actually being the head of uh, a political party. Uh, while we wait for Mr. Jackson to chime in, I would like for you to educate us on the possibility of, uh, let's say, 2023. From your camp, as an opposition or somebody who belongs to a party that is part of the CPP, mm -hmm. give me an objective view of what a ticket should look like, a winning ticket that can take on George Graham, whomever he put forward, have 2023. Uh, if you ask me right now, looking at the landscape in Liberia, looking at the politicians, you know, that are vying for the presidency, from especially within the, the CPP camp, I, I honestly look at, despite his age, like I've told you in the past, I believe Liberia needs someone who is stern. Liberia needs someone who is a disciplinarian. Liberia needs someone who knows how things work. And I believe looking at the political landscape in Liberia right now, the best candidate for that would be Joseph Bokai. And uh, not because he and I, disclaimer, not because he and I come from Lofa. That is not the issue. 
The issue is uh, Liberia needs help. We need leadership. We need not just leadership, but the right kind of leadership. We need, uh, a, we cannot get reform right now in Liberia in terms of leadership in, to, in totality because a reformer is someone who has been through the grind and who understands and who's passionate about change and who doesn't believe in political alliances, who just wants to get the job done, who is people-centered. And when I look within the CPP, I see a lot of technocrats. That's what I see. I see a lot of technocrats, people who have managerial experience, people who have managed money, people who, who, who know how to get stuff done. But what I'm praying is that we get a leader that knows how to go beyond just sitting down and administering stuff. I, I'm praying that we get a leader that is able to go past administration into actual leadership. And leadership calls for stepping out there and making decisions and seeing that your decisions come through. One of my, one of my reservations regarding uh, the age of uh, Uncle Joe, as we call him, is that will he be robust enough? Okay, because now we have we have a a president that quote unquote is robust. He just come from playing. He just came from playing uh, almost two, twenty years or more of soccer, and when we look at him. We find out that his robustness of his or the youth or his, the youthfulness of his age have not really added any value to his presidency. So are we can we say that we find even despite his age, we'll be able to find, I mean, uh, Uncle Joe can come into the, the full and not just provide leadership, but also help in the sense that Uncle Joe can surround himself with patriots that are nationalistic minded and that are committed to seeing change in Liberia, not people who just ready, ready to stuff their pockets or to use the, the resources in government for their own aggrandizement. So these are the questions. But if you ask me, the best politician I'm looking at from the, 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 the CPP right now will be Uncle Joe. And I, I think, uh, what's, what's his name? Cummings can be his VP. Because honestly, Uncle Joe cannot run. He wouldn't be able to do a second term. So Cummings can go with him now as vice president. Uncle Joe serve one term because, like I said, uh, just a bugger has the, the sternness that Liberia needs right now. Okay. Now, uh, I will play the devil's advocate here. Let's look at uh, the, you are handicapping uh, Joseph Boyka and uh, uh, Mr. Cummings. Cummings have said it from the offset that he stands to be number two to no one. He will never serve as number two to anyone because he finds that he feels and he knows within himself that the changes that he wants to make cannot be made for no other position than uh, being number one. He cannot be number two. We also look at Joseph Boyka and Dr. Boyka have also said uh, within himself for the past 45 years that he's been in government, especially the last two years, that he has been like a park car, a race car, with full of energy, uh, with octane, parked in a garage for 12 years. In so doing, he was inept or ineffective. How do you navigate those two uh, variances within the CPP? Yeah, okay, look at the park car stuff. It's like Joe Howard Taylor right now in the, in the CDC government. Despite the fact that she could have brought some balance and giving and, and, and being able to advance some good ideas and help the president to carry the load of governing Liberia. She has been relegated to at, at least at least uh Ambassador Bokai, His Excellency, have been in the garage. Uh, uh Madam 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 Taylor is not even in a garage. I think she's parked by the wayside where the dust and the rain and everything going on her, if I will use that analogy. So when I look at him, I was in Liberia for most of uh, Madame Salif's uh, tenure. And I will be honest with you, what I saw there was, and I, we were talking about it, I think, last night or so, or yesterday, 
the, 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 the power of the presidency. All right. If the president doesn't want his his or her vice to function, that's it. You can't do anything about it because everything is resident in the presidency. And the vice president is just a ceremonial position if you look at it from that perspective, despite being the head of the Senate. OK, now let's look at other combination from my perspective, from what I'm hearing. Uh, some folks from the the uh, the Liberty Party. Mm -hmm. They, they are suggesting why not Boykai and the legacy of Bronski by bringing somebody new, somebody knowledgeable, somebody from the outside who is directly connected to uh, a child's Bronski, like Charlene Bronski, to be, she's a female, she's highly qualified, highly educated, knowledgeable of the issue. Why not pair uh, Dr. Boykai with Charlene Bronski? to bring in a new vibrant, uh, educated class, a woman, somebody who is basically a triple minority. She's a woman, she's highly educated, and then she belongs to one of the founding, one of the founding parties of, of, the, uh, of the CPP. So how do you look at it? How, why, why wouldn't you handicap that as a winning ticket? Yeah, uh, the reason why I won't, because I don't believe in just because a man was a politician, so that means his uh, pro his uh, his progeny has the right to 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 be chosen. Okay, um, if you ask me, I've not seen Charlene demonstrate the kind of leadership that will make me to qualify her to run as a vice presidential candidate. I'm not saying she's not qualified or whatever, but bro, this is like where we're talking about. We have always allowed these, you know, these quasi. Uh, 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 uh political considerations to 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 come to the full hence where we are today okay um a man they say he has the country at heart as if to say that is enough when it comes to the issues of governance so i don't want us to be playing with liberia right now in terms of who we advance i know charlene is a good person and all of that but does she have the gumption does she have the 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 charisma, does she have the character? Does she have the integrity to become vice president of Liberia? Because like I said, whoever runs with Joe Boca, uh, if they defeat the CDC, we end up becoming most likely the, the candidate for the next election because I'm sure on his own accord, Joe Boca will not want to run two terms given how advanced he is in age. So I'm very sure that he will have to step aside. So we want somebody who really wants to do this job, okay? Like I always used to say, people say, oh, Chad Bronski wanted to be president so much that because he has so much passion for Liberia. Bro, the man has so much passion for Liberia. He wanted to see things set right. Unfortunately, the Liberian people had their own choices, okay? And they made their choices known. And unfortunately, we've lost him. He's no longer with us, which is a big blow for Liberia. But to be honest with you, his daughter or any other political daughter or son are not ready for leadership because they still people still thinking Liberia that joke, bro. Jerome, I'm be honest with you, people still think Liberia that joke. They still think that we can just put anybody into power and things will just continue on as it is. We, if you look around us, our neighbors are leaving us behind. We want people who know how things work. We want people with vision, people with drive. People who can advance policies, people have who have rule they, they rule their lives with with with, with uh, uh, progressive ideologies. We cannot but, just sit down yeah. and say as okay, let, uh, not to cut you up. Let me no, let no, me, but let anytime me. this is how if I'm going to win that, you can always well, cut no, me no, off. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. I want to throw some red right out there before we switch over to the CDC ticket, and then we can also handicap and 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 advance that. Uh, on my on my phone here, I have. Uh, somebody from the CPP that saying, what's about uh, Nyomli Kanga and Dylan Ticket? How will you handicap that? Mm -mm. No. Why not? Dylan, I could put, trust me, I, 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 know, I know Dylan's flaws. I know his flaws. There's somebody I know personally. I know his flaws and I know his strengths. I could put Dylan as vice presidential candidate, I could give Dillon, after serving as vice president, I could give Dillon the presidency in Liberia. 
He likes himself. He took something from Charles Bromsky. He is not perfect, but not now. Now, now I can't look at Dylan. I can't look at Dylan over Cummings. I can't look at Dylan over Cummings because Cummings knows how things work. Cummings have experience, government, I mean, a managerial experience. He knows what needs to be done to get stuff accomplished. The position he rose to in Coca-Cola, you cannot rise to such positions if you do not know how things work, if you cannot achieve corporate goals. Okay, okay. What what are some of the qualities that you are looking for in a president and a president and a vice presidential candidate? Name me some of those qualities that you are looking for or the first that thing, should look for. The first thing is honesty. Jerome, you see here myself when we when we when we communicate, I do not blindly hold any position. Okay? Because if we would change Liberia, we have to be very honest with our, our different positions that we hold. We cannot be dogmatic. We cannot be too uh, fanatical about our support for a particular candidate or support for a particular institution. We have to look at the pros and the cons and be able to admit it. So the first thing that I, I didn't see, the thing I didn't see in Madame Salif, and I have not seen the George B. led government, and I have not seen in a lot of governments before them, is the, uh, there's the ability to be honest with the Liberian people. And to three things. Uh, uh, honesty is one. One. The second thing is integrity. The first thing is honesty. The second thing is integrity. Integrity is what you do when no one is looking at you. Okay? And the third thing is accountability or sense of knowing that the like, you, I'm accountable to the Liberian people. They do not work. I, I, I don't have this position for my own aggrandizement. I work for and at the, for the benefit of and at, for the benefit and at the will of the Liberian people. Okay, That's Mr. what I'm Mr. missing. Okay, Mr. Tule. Now mm -hmm. you were talking about honesty, integrity, and accountability. So education, experience, managerial experience, all of those things that some of us uh, think they are very, very important to the leadership. You, They are not that germane to you. When we talk about education, academic criteria. No, but they already, we are, we holding those ones to be constant. We So we're not talking about those things. Those things have been available in leadership in Liberia. But okay, so, so, so if, if you hold those to be constant, when we talk about academia, we talk about academic success, when we're talking about managing rights, if those are constant, does uh, uh, they don't fit either one of those modes, all those modes that we're talking about that are constant? Um, okay, that's why, in my view, in my view, they don't be a maverick, okay, because I look at something, uh, Jerry Rollins, there's a commonality here that I want to establish, Julius Malema, Jerry Rollins. Thomas Sankara and uh, Paul Kagami, they don't have the kind of Western education that we that we talked about. Jerry Rowling went to the military school, which was limited academically, if you if you if you remember, but he was a pilot. And you know, piloting, especially piloting uh, uh, fighter uh, fighter pilots, is mostly it, it's a lot of physics. I agree, but it's also learning by practice. Okay, so. Let's look at let's look at it from that perspective. Not, not, let me let me let me hold you and welcome uh, our brother uh, uh, Honorable Jackson is on the show with us. And uh, Jackson, welcome to On Point. We look forward to uh, uh, your, your discernment and and participation in the uh, the, the uh, public discourse. Well, thank you very. <laughs> we, we didn't hear you. You got to come again. We, we didn't hear you. Go ahead. You no, know, I said uh, thank you very kindly for 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 having me. I thought I was still backstage. No, you are, you are, you are, you are live. So you hear me now, correct? I can hear yeah. you and see you loud and clear. Thank you very uh, much. Let me, let, let, let me brief you real quick on what the topics are today. The first topic we are discussing here actually is the composition of the 2023 uh, electoral process that is, that is pending in Liberia. We are looking at the CDC combination or the CDC ticket. We are looking at several combinations within the CPP or the opposition. We are also looking at the CDC ticket. We'll be also looking at uh, the suspension of the chief of staff of Nyobli Kanga Lawrence. When he spoke his mind, was that the right thing to do? 
And then we're going to be discussing the president's comment during the dedication uh, ceremony last week when he said, forgive me when I play soccer, it is an inbound tendency. Those are the topics we are discussing. Now that you are here as a third party, we would like you to chart me real quick as to how do you think the CPP should postulate or put forward a combination of Canada with the intent of defeating the sitting government? No, thank you. Uh, uh, to begin with, I think the CPP have some challenges that they have to deal with. So it's not just about putting or bringing forward a combination of candidates for the sole purpose of winning an election. The first challenge that is confronting the, C the CPP is that the CPP has not been able to convincingly demonstrate to the Liberian people that it can serve as a credible alternative to President Weir, especially regarding its position on the fight against corruption. You will agree with me that corruption is one of the major challenges confronting our country. And if you look at the CPP and do an objective critique of the CPP, you will be very concerned about how it has been approaching the issue, the issue of corruption. Take for example, and I said you said you will go to other issues, but take for example. Uh, Mr. Ellis Kumi, a ranking member of the CPP, is currently seen in public up and down the country with Mr. Musa Hassan Billiti, knowing fully well that Mr. Billiti has a morally despicable CV. He has a tarnished character. He is a condemned FIFA froster. Now, a man who wants to be president for Liberia, what in Craig's name is he hanging around with a guy who has been condemned by FIFA as a froster and banned for 10 consecutive years? A guy who has, you know, linked with myriad of corruption scandals. You are living in the United States, for example. In the United States, anybody who is guilty of moral turpitude, you know it is not an easy thing for that person to even get a job in the United States. Moral turpitude, for example, is something like uh, what we would call in Liberia, in Liberia, you say the man stealing from the school. In America, they say the man is, is shoplifting. Uh, moral topic you fall on an issue of tax evasion. Mr. Billity has been found guilty. In 2010, he was found guilty uh, for tax evasion. In fact, he was accused in 2010. He pleaded guilty in 2012 of tax evasion. When the people in the CPP come on the public radio, they make the issue of tax evasion to look like it's an acceptable conduct in civil society. And that's not true. So, my initial argument that I have made to the CPP is that the CPP needs to place a cordon sanitaire around people who have morally despicable CVs. Because there is, the, the, if you look at the Bible, right? The Bible, especially the proverbs, the proverbs convey fundamental and objective truth. For example, the proverbs says, you cannot. And you underscore the word cannot. He said, You cannot keep a clean repetition. You cannot keep a clean repetition hanging around with our messy people. Well, said, all right, Isaac, Isaac. Somebody who wants okay. somebody who wants to be a presidential candidate. I don't know whether in, the, in America, if you want to be president and put a notoriously corrupt person, an utterly corrupt person behind you, where the American people will find you a celebrity candidate, it's a challenge. I'm not sure uh, it's, not, it's not a challenge. It's, it's a yeah. challenge we are having with the CPP. 
And I George, think it's a challenge yeah. for our country. Okay, okay, uh, uh, Honorable Jackson, one minute. Yeah, uh, Tula, you want to step in. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Donald Trump declared Ben Groff six, uh, six, six times. And he had he had he had had uh before becoming president he had, he had been to court numerous times i'm not i'm not excusing uh of musa ability i myself have issues with musa ability but let me say something to you isaac and anybody all that doing listening to us we uh, excuse me one minute excuse me one minute george uh uh, uh honorable uh, jackson Yes, sir. Uh, can we refer to you just by first name, if it's oh, okay? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, me and myself, we 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 come from way. Don't, so just don't worry. Don't you mean, I'm a wave, but we all live in the world. So okay, that, that, that's fine. Let's uh, go ahead. That's uh, good. Uh, okay, so so I think when you look at when you look when you look in Liberia, I said something one time. Uh, when when the Taylor government left. And the interim came, and then Ellen Johnson said it came, and she had to work with certain people from the Taylor government. And people were saying, and I was saying, how many educated, experienced people we have to say that we want to have a wholesale change? We have to make some compromises. In the political sphere, you know fully well that it has to do with who can give you the most, even if the criminal can give you, can open doors to you, sometimes you'll be hell bent. To even accept his support, yeah, understand something. Yeah, you can, you know, you and myself, I said, you and myself come from a, we we support our man who shared this view. And let me say this to you: in politics, it's different from my governing, because at the, the time of politics, sometimes I have to make, I have to make some compromises that necessarily I wouldn't do outside of yeah, politics. But George, a point, a point. Of they say politics yes. makes Jerome. Let me just say this: they say yeah, politics makes. Strange bad fellows. We understand so, this, but but you contradicting yourself because when I ask you, I said, "What are those things that you are looking for within or candidate?" You told me number one was honesty, number two was integrity, number three was accountability. Now, if integrity is primary to you, how could you compromise your integrity and your but that's moral not compromise, stand? But that's not compromising. If you ask me, Alex, Alex, Alex Cummings, for instance. So if, if we say this, then the entire Liberty Party, if you look at it, we cannot impute, we cannot, we cannot impute Musa's actions of the past upon the entire Liberty Party. Oh no, uh, Mr. Jackson, step in here because I don't want you to say. No, 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 let me, 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 Honorable Jackson, let me, let me, let me, let me respond. Let me respond first. Let me respond yes. fully first. Yes. Let me respond fully first. We cannot impute fully. Because you see, the thing about it is this. This is Isaac Jackson's personal stance regarding issue. This is how he will handle leadership. But when Isaac Jackson is looking for leadership in Liberia and he wants to contend the election, and he says he only wants people with the cleanest character. Nobody have ever accused them or everybody have uh, uh, made an assets declaration. Nobody has ever been in, in uh, phone corrupt or even accused of corruption. He will have a very small team to support him. This is something that we have to consider. I'm just saying, I'm, you always play the devil advocate. I'm telling I'm, you. I'm the truth. Step in here. I know you want to say something. Thank you. You know, I, I am embarrassed. I'm not too sure my friend George decided that he will come on this public platform. Mm -hmm. to slavishly defend a corrupt bandit, especially when the country is struggling with the issues of corruption. And this is the fundamental problem. See the example that George accused to. He goes to Mr. Trump. Is he suggesting that Mr. Trump had been one of America's best president? Oh, but you, you, no, are, you yeah. said you don't... You, no, no, no. Your no, point no, was... No, no, George, wait, no, George, George, wait. You see, if we are going to use examples, we got to use the best examples. Oh, well, then, then, using a wrong example to justify a point, and then you are wrong because the example you pick up is not it is not a possible and convincing example that anybody will want to go and follow behind. You talk about Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump has some challenges before he assumed the presidency. Even in the presidency, you see how much he handled the presidency. America 
rate globally diminished. America standing, more standing globally diminished. And this is the problem that we're dealing with in Liberia. And, and, and you said, and I, and I agree with you on the point when you talk about the issue of integrity, accountability, that is, those are the shared values that we will promote in our institution. Because if you want a better Liberia, you want people who have public morality. In the instant case, public morality talks about what? Accountability. But if you're going to say, we're going to compromise, George, if you want to compromise, you cannot compromise with corrupt individual, morally decrepit individual. How can you say you want a better Liberia yeah, and but, you're uh, hanging uh, around uh, with people who are morally bankrupt? Yeah, Mr. Do, you believe, do you believe that a morally bankrupt Okay, person okay, hold on, hold on, Sumana. As a, you, you raised okay, as a okay, 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 but George, 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 can I George, one minute, George, one minute. Uh, uh, Honorable Jackson, I think you got a point there because from what I'm saying here, uh, 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 Mr. Trump, Donald Trump was never convicted of any crime. He used the law. Bankruptcy is, is a legal process in this country. You can declare bankruptcy a thousand times. That was in the law. He was never Absolutely. convicted. He was never convicted. Musa Bilita has been convicted twice. Not by the international community and like the Liberian government, the Liberian that he wants to serve. Go ahead. Not, convicted not, how? Huh? No, how? But like, mm -hmm. let me explain how you how you being convicted. In 2010, mm -hmm. the stability in government, the Unity Party government that he campaigned for, he served as campaign manager for Unity Party government. His own government found him guilty for tax evasion in 2012. He was accused 2010. He was declared guilty in 2012. It's public record. Okay. I'll ask you the question. Yeah, but let me but answer the question. Well, you not know, but the just, just you already feel many I, I the, the, the floor was mine. The no, say, listen, the floor was no, mine. Just, just, the floor was mine. The floor was mine. Answer the question. Yeah, but so, you already answered the question. No, need no, 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 I well, I think, well, listen, 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 Musa Bilita George. was convicted, George, he was, he was I'm convicted not defending, twice, he named yeah. one, whether the second conviction, sir, he was convicted by the, by he the, was the also, government. he was listen. also a George, he was also a George, as a fraudulent, Musa Bilita, Masika, okay, hold on now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on now, he's also on involved, with myriad of corruption scandal ranging from what economic support which he was involved with the Rabat International Airport. He was also he also linked to the issue of the twenty-seven million dollar road fund. So all of the major corruption scandal in Liberia, the stability is linked to those corruption scandals. That's correct. Now, George, go ahead. Yes, guys. Now, 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 George, he has. George, George, go ahead. I'm saying, man. Yeah, he has Isaac. Isaac, if you talk, you got it. Because all of them will start talking about each other and they won't go, go, go ahead, ahead, George. Go ahead. So George, when you ahead. make your point, let me let somebody else make theirs. Go ahead. You got you got. My thing minutes. is this: I, uh, uh, Alex Cummings is running. He he got. Uh, let me put it this way. Ellis Cummings has a platform. Liberty Party has a chairman. The chairman of the Liberty Party is Musa Bility. The people in Liberty Party elected Musa Bility as chairman. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They elected Musa Bility as chairman of the party. You and I are in Liberty Party. We're not on the ground. The people on the ground, the county leaders, the people who are delegates at the convention, they voted for Musa Bility. So You're guess wrong. what? The You're fact wrong. that Musa, hold on, hold on, hold on. The fact that Musa Bility was, 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 was elected chairman is, a, is an indictment on you and I and the legacy of Charles Bromsky. It is not an indictment on Ellis uh, 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 Comics necessarily because okay, guys. as a member of no, the CPP, no. hold on, hold on, no. Jerry, let me make my point. Okay, as a man. member of the CPP, uh, he will work with other CPP members in advancing his own political platform. So if you ask me, 
it, he were, he was elected as the anchor what kind of language you tried to use i know you were saying that it was an illegal it was an illegal convocation you, it, he was elected okay, okay. Now, let, let now, me clarify this mr, mr. Yeah, Gamer, uh, real, real quick this. so we'll move on to the next topic yeah go ahead now, mr Gamer, you see what is what george is doing he's being economical with the truth and i think it's despicable you don't do that I said, well, why don't you just, why don't you just, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, here, here, as it, as it, here, eh, we try to, we try to, to, to limit the, the personal back and forth, let's just discuss No, but there's nothing personal, he said you've been, no, 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 this is the second time, you see, listen, I got words too, as I know me, I'm a wordsmith myself, I try to be minimum who come here. George, George. No, 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 Jerome, Jerome, listen, it will have a very, it will have a very, Respectful conversation. Go ahead, go ahead. So, so, so we can move. We can I can, move I can disagree show. with you without saying you are an embarrassment to me or you are being economical with the truth. Just speak to your, just defend your side of the issue. That's it. We're not on the palabra hot yet. Okay, great. Uh, uh, Mr. Jackson, Lance, so we can go to the next topic. Well, but Mr. Gilbert, let me say this. And I will draw uh, Jerome, uh, let me do the room, but uh, George. George's, George's attention to a Chinese proverb. It says, calling things by their proper name is the beginning of wisdom. If you're doing something that is embarrassing, just like there's no euphemistic way to put it that you're doing something that is embarrassing and despicable. Now, you come on public radio, and this is the problem I have with the people in the CPP. Instead of the CPP people, you came with me, you, came with me, you know this. So, stop. Oh, you, just just this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let them with me. me. Listen, this George, thing with this something else. Listen, it's not about me. It's not about me. Because if it's not, I can no, I can attack. I can attack you if I want to. Let, George, it's not about me. Go ahead, Mr. Jackson. Let's land so we can move on. You, you, you see, you see, you see, uh, Barack Bar Bar Gilman. Here is the problem that you have. Embarrassingly, people who are supposed to be advocating. For our brothers and sisters on Stroker Street, they have turned themselves into slavery sycophant, defending morally decrepit individuals only because those people are their friends. That is a problem. We have to call a shovel a shovel. We, the Liberty Party, Nyobli Kanga Lawrence, organized a Bugos special convention to inveigle corruptibility to the chairmanship of the Liberty Party in contravention of Article 8 of the party's uh, constitution. Because she did that, the partisan, there is a group of people now we call the Concerned Liberty Partisan, and the founding executive members of the Liberty Party, they have issued this is calling on Madame Yobli Kanga Lawrence as political leader of the party, to a bar bar the president in the party. There is an established president in the party that says, and you know, uh, my friend, president is a law. President is a is an abandoning, is a binding doctrine in the law. The established president in the party is that when an elected official or an appointed official is linked to corruption scandal, that person is asked to step aside as a way of protecting the reputation, the integrity of the party. It's also done so as not to serve, so that person will not serve as a distraction for the party. That president will carry out in the case of former chairman Israel Akin Sire. When Mr. Israel Akin Sire was linked to corruption uh, with the Lone Star Strash car, the party then stand up bearer, Councillor Charles Bronsky, founding stand up bearer of the party, asked Mr. Israel Akin Sire, in spite of the fact that Mr. Akin Sire was his nephew, asked him to step aside. Mr. Sire did in obedience of the party's position. Mr. Ben Sandy, another pop popular guy, he's on one of the talk show, he was also chairman of the party. Mr. Ben Sandy was involved with a scandal at the Ministry of Finance. He took a controversial move. When her knee came out and had loomed between a controversial issue, again, the founding standard barrier, holding on to the integrity and the established practice in the party, asked Ben Sard to step aside. So, Mr. Billity came to the helm of power 
Upon coming to the hem of power, it will discover that Mr. Stability is being banned, condemned by an internationally respected body for corruption. And so when information came to the attention of the party, Mr. Stability has been asked to step aside. The, it is public knowledge. Now, what we, expect, what we expect the CPP to do in this instant case is for the CPP that wants to serve as an alternative to we are to go to the Liberty Party, considering that the index could talk to the Liberty Party and say, look, there is an aphorism that says, if you lie with dogs, you will get fleas. All right, if all right. Yeah. The company right. of more okay, Mr. Can, Mr. Jackson, Jackson, Mr. can we make this thing a dialogue? So, Mr. Mr. Jackson, you, know, you have you have you, you have done you have done an excellent job in expressing the views of those of us who have known this for a while. But let's switch to the, the flip side of this here for the time experience. Let's look at the CDC. I'm a thank you from the, from the outset. I'm a CDC, so it's a disclaimer, so everybody can know this. Okay, we have within the CDC we have a standard bearer and a standard and a, and a vast standard bearer, a one that. Uh, the, the opposition wants to unseat. What is it now that you see as a flaw that has the propensity of unseating this government in mid-flight? And then I, uh, you got two minutes, and I'll go to George. I, I think I think the first the, C, the the CDC is not doing very well to convince our people that it is managing the affairs of the state adequately. Uh, for example, there are cases of murder up and down the country. Uh, the government has not shown convincingly that it has zero tolerance on the heinous crimes by prosecuting or seriously investigating those uh, murder cases. For example, two very intelligent people, they graduated at the top of their classes. Uh, they died mysteriously in a car or jeep on Broad Street. The government wants us to believe that those people who graduated at the top of their classes sat in a car without trying to make any attempt to leave from the car and car bomb on us are killed there. That is a scar on whatever the conscience of this government. This government must need to bring to proper closure the death of those two auditors and other mysterious deaths in the country. You know, you cannot explain away the, the value of human life. Two seriously intelligent people graduated at the top of their classes died right on Broad Street. And Thank you want you. us to believe that the start of the and carbon monoxide and, 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 and we just talk it in a kind of passive way and we're not doing anything serious about it. I okay. think it's possible. Thank, Thank you, Jack. Uh, Mr. Mr. Tule. It's your, it's your turn. Your two minutes. Go ahead, my, my yeah, friend. Yeah, but I, I will first, I will, I will complete a point that was making earlier. That I was go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Within, within your purview, uh, go ahead. My point at that time, you asked me if Dylan, you asked me about Dylan Yumbly, and I told you, I said, Dylan, I made a statement that Dylan was, is a maverick. And uh, Dylan, Dylan, Dylan is an exception in the fact that he may not have the credentials to show that he had completed a uh, set amount of years of Western style education. But uh, I, I, I listed leaders that have made marks in Africa that have done great things for the people that did not have or did not meet the same criteria of, in terms of <laughs> having credentials from Western institutions. And I said I started with uh, just a plain old military man, uh, Thomas Sankara, that came and revolutionized his country, changed the name, and brought in a lot of uh, policies that that started to lift his people up before he was his life was cut short. Um, mm -hmm. I also mentioned uh, Rollins. We know what Kagami is doing right now. He's alive, and we know Kagami did not go to any university that we know of. Okay, but Kagami, <laughs> he knows how things work. He knows what a nation needs, and so I put Dylan almost in that same stuff. The only problem that I will see from I will see that Dylan will be faced with is he will have to work with the same Liberian people. The problem no. is not just the leadership. The problem is with our mindset. I'll give you a common example. If but, George, but, yeah, George, George, I want to bring you back on point. We are talking about the CDC. Yeah, I'm, going, I'm going there now. I'm going there now. If George, if George, we are, if George, we are with all his 
flaws and his inadequacies. The Bible says something. The Bible says, remove evil counsel from around a king and his throne will be established in righteousness. If George Weir had the right people with the right mindset, the right ideology, visionaries around him, people who were hungry to see, to alleviate poverty, to help the Liberian people, uh, to to improve the issue, the Human Development Index in Liberia. If George, if George Weir had the right people who understood what it took, why why we are seventy around seventy percent electricity, and what what it needs, what, what what that development, real development in the context, in the modern context, cannot be achieved with that level of electricity and the low IQ level. So if he had people around him who would say, "Hey, chief, we need to invest in education. We need to make sure that other literacy is achieved." We need to take our literacy rate from 70% to at least 50% within six years. And that, that calls for some high level of investment in, in, in education. In George, we have people who understood that we are an agrarian society by and large, and, that, and, and, and subsistence farming has been our mainstay, but how can we feed ourselves as a nation? Uh, and if you wanted, that we needed to invest greatly in education, I mean, and, and, and agriculture to be able to create economy out of agriculture, like agriculture that is an agronomy. If you have people who understood how things work, he will be in a better position today than relying on the tandem of, of Maguire and Tue, who have managed to hoodwink him, who have managed to corral him in under their control because they want to advance their own interest against that of the entire country. I, I understand it, but the question here is, uh, I'm a sedition. We are satisfied with the ticket that we have. I know there are, there are a lot of uh, innuendo within the CPP and the opposition saying that uh, we are going to replace our vice president. What I'm saying to you, both of you guys, is who is out there? First of all, can the CPC be defeated in 2023? And if the answer is yes, who are those that are capable of doing that? Uh, Mr. Jackson, real quick. And then we will segue into the firing of Nyobi Kanga's chief of staff. Go ahead, Mr. Jackson. To begin with, I disagree with the uh, what a plausible description being attributed to Dylan by my friend George. I think the attribution is wrong. I think Dylan is just good at pretenses, but he is a dishonest fellow and an indecent opportunist. So he will not make a good leader. I thought you were the same person I said, we should not, we should not, we should not. When the last time I was talking, you called and you said you didn't want to reduce the conversation to individual level. No, 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 speak. no, 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 no. The reason why I'm saying that, let's see, let's see. The reason why I'm saying that, let's see. The reason why I'm saying Go ahead, Mr. Jackson. Josh, you are the one, you are the one, uh, you are the one ascribing to Dylan all of these plausible and glorious attributes. And I know Dylan, Truthfully, so I'm telling you who he is. That you, know, you don't know Dylan more than me. That what? You don't know Dylan more than me. I know him. I know him very well because I know the public record, and now I'm telling you the public record. This what is the public Dillon, record? The good number one. The first thing is Dylan has a very interesting history. He pretends about his history, and he had his history. Dylan served as the special assistant to Mr. T. C. Gu. T. C. Gu was the solicitor general of the MPP government on a charge stealer. He served as special assistant to T.C. Gu. T.C. Gu was the guy who defended the murder, the wholesome murder of Samuel C. Doki and his entire family. Now, this man who was serving as special assistant to T.C. Gu, he aided T.C. Gu in defending the wholesale murder of Samuel Doki and his entire family. What about that history? That history is troubling. But you leave that history and you even come to Dylan's present posture. Dylan was standing and making pretenses in the Liberian Senate that he was an anti corruption person. What happened overnight? As a political Pharisee, Dylan pathetically crawled on his belly in the setting room of the pro temporary Abotier, begging for her aunt. Mr. Abotier accused Dillon in the public and Dillon remained uncharacteristically silent about that accusation. Now, no, but how, man, how did I be, if I beg you for money, how, how, how does that impugn my, my character? 
you know, that's dishonesty. You cannot criticize acting like a political Pharisee. You criticize the man as being corrupt. Then in the net, you crawl on your belly and go to the you use, man making for money. Use, he didn't crawl on his belly. He had to walk. He's not a snake. You know, you crawl on his belly. No, no, you, you see, Isaac, Isaac, no, we, no, we, no, we, no, we no, have gone past, we, 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 listen, we have gone past this, 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 uh, a sidewalk, uh, of, yeah, of, 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 we're not market, George, or, or, uh, terminologies. George, Jerome, Jerome, George, 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 let me, let, let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me interject when it comes to, when it comes to Dylan. I'm putting up the record here where, when he was here at Australia, where it was incumbent upon him to produce his high school certificates and where he has achieved some academic success, he filled out the form and he claimed that he, he graduated from the University of Liberia. That is dishonesty. Somebody will graduate from the University of Liberia and come and go to Australia as an undergraduate. It, it's possible. No, it's not. It it's is not possible. Possible. You can get, you can get, oh, man. Jerome, Jerome, listen. I defer to you. Listen, big brother. I, I, I defer I to you. Three, four in, in, honor yeah, degree. understand something that I defer to you in these discussions in terms of for us to keep it civil. But you, 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 you are allowing it to to descend into something no, else. No, 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 no. Listen, because facts, I have to. Facts, facts it's cannot, not a fact. Facts cannot be. Facts cannot be. Cannot be facts, something that is degrading. These are the facts. Fact. No, Dylan never. He had never said once in his entire life that he got it from Universal like Europe. But let me tell you, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. I was talking. The man said, the man said, I can't even make a statement and defend myself. One minute again, he said, he said, I have been. An apprentice in a law firm for 13 years, that should be equivalent to a law degree. That is different. That listen, that's his perception. Doesn't make it true. Oh, well, he didn't commit any crime. Listen, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot charge him with a for, with, with being with being with being uh, 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 on law untruthful or or criminal by saying, Oh, yes, I served for 13 years in the law firm. So okay, it's equivalent to a law degree. To it's, it's, it's my perception. Listen, it's my perception. Can I finish? 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 Let go ahead. Can I finish? Because yeah. once I start talking, it's like nobody wants to. You don't want to give me a chance to make my point, and no, it's, ahead, not, it's, ahead, it's disingenuous if you ask me. But let me say this: the point here is, Delon's. I, I said Delon's a maverick. I never said Delon had Delon met the subscription of credentials when it comes to Westing. Education. I've never said that. Dylan, even himself, would not even say that. Okay. The, the first thing is a man who has a cloud over his head that he did not even graduate from Wellheston when he said he graduated from Wellheston will say I graduated from University of Liberia. That is far fetched. But let's leave that. My He's point was this. My point was this. My point was this. I said to you that the man is a maverick. I said it. And guess what? And guess what? The fact is, he alone. In the history of our modern contemporary history, uh, uh, politics, he alone had been the one bold enough in the Liberian Senate, Senate to stand and make the declarations that he has made. He alone. You're wrong. You can't, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You see, you see, no, you see, what, what, what happening here is there is a saying that a liar begins by making true laws like falsehood and ends by making falsehood laws like true. And that's what George is doing. Dylan. So you calling me a liar? You see, you see, you see how Isaac is so petty no, and so. George, George, no, 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 Jerome, 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 Jerome. Yeah. I have had enough. Listen, listen. On this show, mm -hmm. right. we try to make it. We try to. We try to respect our differences. Mm -hmm. We try to. We try to disagree. I can disagree with you vehemently without attacking your person. Listen, you do not allow. Do not allow what we what we are creating here to become of of. Uh, how we call it, like like a disrespectful gathering, because I will not be, listen, listen, I will not be a part of anything that is disrespectful. My point here is this, eh? he can disagree with me without calling me a liar. Because you know, okay. one thing, wait, 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 I will talk. One thing, one thing, one thing, anybody, one thing, anybody, I said, you have, you have no, 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 Isaac has no integrity as a person. When we lost the election in 2005, eh, and things were difficult on us, what did he do? He abandoned Charles Bromsky. 
He didn't want to abandon Charles Bronski to go work for Ellie. This gentleman was all over on every media attacking the person, the man who spent his money to help educate this man. This man was brave enough to go around attacking the person of Charles Bronski. You understand what I'm saying? He, he this man bites the hands <laughs> that feed him. So Isaac has no he has no integrity or he has no standing when it comes to me. Because you know the reason why? He's a he's a he's a fair weather cock. You know who's a fair weather cock? A cock who only comes outside when the weather is fair. Okay? This man looks for the hottest sun to dry his blankets. He has no character. He has no ability to stand on his own. So he shouldn't look at me and, and, and stay in this in this in this conversation that we're having that he wants to impugn the character of Delon. He has never won any elected office in Liberia. At least the, the office of the senator of Washington County. So he cannot, this man would, would he would never have be defeated CDC in Montserrado County. Never. Because you know the reason why? Nobody trusts him. Because we know for the well he abandons, he abandons people at the hour of their need. So let us just give me a chance. You shouldn't never, you should never call me a liar because you know what I mean? Somebody will tell you in my family or anywhere, anybody who know me, that I do not subscribe to lies. It's not part of my method. See, you may disagree with me and do it with respect, but don't look at me and call me a liar because I will not allow you to stand. Because the thing about it is this, if you want to call me a liar, he who demands equity must come with clean hands. You, as an individual, you have no standing in this society of ours. You have no respect among your peers because everybody knows you're fair with a cock. So give me the respect that I'm due. Let's have a civil conversation, please. Okay, George. Okay, George. okay, okay let, 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 me, let me come in there now. Let, no, wait, yeah, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. So go please ahead, do your back. best. Please do your best to guard the conversation. I'll be very calm and I'll deal with No, 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 no. no. You, 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 I will, you I will deal with this very calm. First thing, this man is a lying charlatan because first he bears four witness to something that he doesn't even know about. Mm, yeah, I wasn't there. Yeah, no. Bronski, that he mentioned peace to his artists, would be the first person to say that he did not pay my school fee anywhere. That is a blatant lie. The records are there. I went to school, law school on judicial scholarship. I'm a judicial scholar. I didn't need mm -hmm. money to go to law school. In honor graduate, I benefited from various scholarships. All right? You never if collected money from Bronski in my presence. That way you're trying to yeah. lie here. You look, you look at this. this you, are a lying you never collected charity. money from Bronski in my presence. You are a lying charity. And that's why you bear it for You never you collected money, money from Bronski in my presence. I said somebody else's presence. You are a lying charity. That's why you bear it for witness for Dillon. You are strange. Okay. You are strange, dude. Okay. It Mr. is Jackson, you have no you have Mr. no Jackson, integrity. You will Mr. not. George, George, you are a liar. You. you make your living by lying and pretending. You Mr. make your living by lying. Mr. Jackson, you make lying out of your career. You thought Mr. Jackson, you're good at that. So, so, right. so no, 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 hold on, gentlemen, gentlemen, please hold on, gentlemen, please hold on, focus on Liberia, encourage several heated debate, but the debate is generating into something, and management will not hesitate to end the broadcast, or uh, should you guys continue uh, to throw punches at each other instead of going at the issues? So please, management has asked me to step in to remind you to stick to the issue. Mr. Gilman, please take charge. Thank you, folks. The conversation. Oh, gentlemen, let's, 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 so I was, I was, I was in flight, and I think I need to learn my talk. Yeah, please, man, so, we can, so we can segue into our next, our next. So that's the fundamental fairness. So I was saying that my friend was bearing for witness because it is public record that in two thousand nine. 
when Dillon was participating in the by election to be senator of Mosulado County, he fraudulently claimed that he graduated from Wellhester. There was absolutely no evidence to show that he graduated from Wellhester. I think if you want to be senator, you need not graduate from high school. So there was absolutely no need for the man to lie about his high school paper. And so during the course of the debate, Mr. Dillon was asked to name five of his classmates. Dillon woefully failed. He was due under the hall. So Dillon did not graduate from a good setting high school. In fact, in 2004, Dillon posted two CVs. One of those CVs, he claimed he graduated from St. Peter Clever High School in Buchanan, Grand Basel County, 1989. When people show up to testify that he did not go to St. Peter Clever High School in uh, uh, 1998 as clean, he then catapulted and went straight and rushed to Wellheston. As we speak, they don't cannot produce a convincing document which will authenticate that he holds a high school wire certificate. If he did that, I will. Ten, I would leave from here. I would throw on my knees from London to Nigeria because he will not do. So Dillon has been getting away with lies. He be getting away with cheap pretenses, and I think we should call him off for who he is. Thank you very much. Now let's segue into the next topic here. The next topic here is uh, the chief of staff for Senator Nyobli Kanga Lawrence made a comment accusing his boss for taking bribe in signing on to the printing of the $48.7 billion for which he said he was embarrassed and he wanted to bring this up for a debate. And in subsequent turn, the Senator suspended him without pay and the Senate backed her and saying that they may even go further because by accusing one of their own, he has accused them all. Mr. Jackson and uh, 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 George, I'll start with you, George, because I mean, these are, you both of you guys are partisan. You all are members of the uh, of Liberty Party, and this is coming right out of the belly of the Liberty Party when we are talking about integrity, when we are talking about honesty, and when we are talking about accountability. Uh, George, truly. Yeah, but the, your, your areas. The first mm -hmm. thing is the conversation that we're having is we're looking at uh, whether or not a chief of staff mm -hmm. of, of a senator will go on an interview to attack another senator. Bro, or he boss. He or boss. he boss even. It's not mm -hmm. done. It, it, it's, it, it, you, the only time you do that, except you want you, you don't want a job again. You know that. It's not going to be. Look, we... we the first thing we, we must realize here, as much as we, we heal the issue of integrity, honesty, and accountability, if you work for me in my office, you know the, the, the situation with politics. Politics is not, is not a clean game. And you know fully well that we all, I personally am against the printing of the money. I personally, I'm against any senator. So if Yombli Kanga, in truth, if she took money to sign on to the printing of the, 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 the banknotes, I'm against that. I'm against that. But you see, I will not speak to something that I do not have facts of in that particular situation to say, yes, she took it. Because now we are talking about, did she take it or did she, she didn't take it? But the fact here is, as our chief of staff in the Liberian Senate, if you will go on an interview to speak and to speak against another senator, you've lost your job. If you want to be an independent person with your own views, because when you work in the office of a senator, you defend, you represent the views of that individual. When you go to speak out there, you speak as if to say you are that individual. So when you start to misrepresent the individual's own, maybe their personal uh, uh, interest, you lost, the confidence is no longer there, they will not retain you. And that's just what it is. So this is this one is beyond politics. This one, the first thing, because we, we have to dissect it to be able to appreciate it. 
the first thing we, we must appreciate is as the representative or, or as the, the senior person in the office of the senator, the senior senator for Grand Bassa County. If you are going to hold any kind of conversation, you representing your boss. And if you go and you disagree, you you publicly shame your boss by criticizing her colleagues. Leave that one to the senators. Let the senator do that thing. Do your job. Get your money. Go home. Okay. Okay, Josh. Uh, one minute. Uh, 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 Honorable Jackson, go ahead. Ch so, chime in. Again, I I disagree with with George. I think I don't think anybody should lose their job because they criticize or speak against corruption. Corruption is a cancer. It is eating all our society. A friend Delon is making pretenses for fighting against corruption, and I think Delon should be embracing the vero who criticizing corruption. But here is the thing with the vero in question. The vero in question, Mr. Daniel Sandu, is a victim of his own blatant hypocrisy and double standards. Why do I say so? Daniel Sandu is in Morovia, benefited a gift from Musa Belete, a pickup truck, and because he benefited a pickup truck from Mr. Musa Belete, he is slavishly defending Mr. Belete up and down the country. Now, if you are defending a FIFA condemned frustral liability because he gave you a pickup truck, Mr. Daniel Sando, where do you then derive your moral authority to criticize other people on corruption? This is where I find my trouble with Mr. Sando. But here is the other thing with the Sando conduct. Sando is supposed to know this well-established authority that if you are going to suck with the devil, you may use a long spoon, right? Madam Yobli Kanga Lawrence that Sando works for has zero, and I said zero record on fighting against corruption. So if you're working for a lady who has zero record on fighting against corruption, how dare you speak against corruption? You will get why you why you speaking against. Say for example. Nyombli Kanga Lawrence, the residence that she owned along the Congo, Congo Town Boulevard near the uh, uh, how you call it, ministerial complex was constructed for her by her sugar daddy, Mr. T. Oh, so, come and, on. And, oh, uh, I'm going to stop interrupting. Listen, and, let, me let me lay my talk, brother. Let me lay my talk. We are keeping a serious conversation. And that building was constructed during the Taylor regime when corruption was flourishing in the government. So she has been a beneficiary of a terrible system. But beyond that, Madam Yomli Kanga Lawrence organized a Bugo special convention to put to the hem of the Liberty Party, you know, somebody who has a morally decrepit CV. So you see, she, she's not interested. She's very comfortable with corruption. Tell me, Madam Yomli Kanga Lawrence, up to staying in the Senate for eight consecutive years, there is zero record of normally speaking against corruption in that Senate for close to eight years. The only time normally started shaking her head a little bit was when my friend Dylan, this notorious pretender, went there and started making pretenses about fighting corruption before we started hearing normally voice. So over time, normally history is replete with somebody who is comfortable with corruption. So when Dana Sando, one of her office assistants, goes on the public and speak against corruption, she got to find it offensive because she enjoys corruption, right? So that's what happened. In the Mr. Instance. George Tule. Yeah. Now you are you are one of those who are uh advocating uh, we talk about integrity and, and the whole nine year as it relates to that. I'm a manager, I own a business, I hire folk. So I agree with you on one hand that I am the speaker and the defender of my corporations when the abc or cbs shows up and they want to talk to anybody within my business my the manager will say i refer to the chairman of the board or the ceo we are the only two that can speak so i understand where you're coming from but as a manager the number one defender the number one record keeper the number one defender of this lady that had all the inside information says as a whistleblower, maybe he said, I know for the fact that he, Brian Envelope came into my office and my boss benefited. And I know for the fact that it was $20,000. Isn't he a credible? 
person to indict this woman based on his position of power within the office? If you ask me if he saw it and it's true, then he, he, what he says, it needs to be taken out of out of, of face value. If but you ask what, me, I'm, what I'm saying, what? the position of power, his position, they mm -hmm. are certain people within a corporation that has access to all documents to have access to, for that person, the number one defender. To say, uh, this is what it is. Don't you think that those, Labira has a whistleblower's law. Don't you think that he, Mr. Sando, should be protected by the whistleblower law? Oh, yeah, but understand, understand this. I don't think he has been terminated. I heard that he was suspended. Without pay. Because, yeah, because the Senate has its own bylaws. They, they have their own way of organizing the office. If you, anywhere in, in the world, whistleblower protection, if you work for the general, if you, like for instance, if he was a, a staff in the, in the Senate, like the Senate Secretariat, if he was a staff in the Senate and he had that kind of conversation, that those laws would, 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 would defend him. But if you work at the will and pleasure of a person as a staff in their office, they can fire you and say, I no longer enjoy your confidence. Meaning, you saw money, but did you see it for, was, was it written? I'm just saying something. I'm not saying what he said was a lie. But let me let look at this. If you saw money coming into my office, $20,000 in the brown envelope, a yellow envelope, what color the envelope is. And you went ahead of press conference. You did not see me sign any document say, yes, I supported this. Or you did not see me sign any receipt that this money came from the office of Judge Judge Weir and I signed to receive the money for this purpose. You saw money, and you went and had that conversation. The person would say, "Whatever you see in my office, you go and talk about." So you no longer enjoy my confidence, and that is a separate case. Should they be protected? Yes, but in the situation where you work for an individual. You can no longer enjoy the person's confidence, and you are not working for the Senate. Understand something, Daniel Sando is not a Senate employee. He works in the office of Yombri Kanga. Okay, he works in the office of Yombri. So he's he's a, he's an employee of Yombri Kanga. First and foremost, it was because of Yombri Kanga that he has access to that building. So if Yombri Kanga ceases to be a senator tomorrow, Daniel loses his job. He no longer he will no longer be employed. So he works at the will and pleasure of Yomdi Kanga. So I'm, if you get up and say, okay, I saw this and I want to speak against, then you no longer enjoy the person's confidence. I mean, yeah, but, just, yeah, but the letter that the, le the letter that was or, or Mr. Jackson, real quick, the letter that was just posted came from the Senate. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Jackson. Again, again, you know, uh, my friend again is is wrong. It's wrong because. Working for Nyombli Kanga Lawrence should not stop anyone in Liberia from speaking genuinely against corruption. But that's not the everywhere issue. corruption. No, 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 brother. Wait now, take your time. Everywhere corruption appears, we should have people who are genuine whistleblower. The conduct exhibited by this guy, except when I talk about a hypocrisy, but the conduct exhibited by this brother is justified in evidence law. You don't need to have hardcore evidence. In evident law, there is a doctrine called presumption of the facts. If you look at the first and the second stances, advocacy all around the world take place under the presumption of the facts. Sometimes you look at circumstantial evidence. The man works in the office. He sees movement. He sees people doing things in a very strange manner. He said, based on A, B, C, and D, I am reaching the conclusion that these people have taken some money. They have been motivated in this way, in an unfair way, to pass the bill. And why, why is he saying so? He's saying so because if you look at Liberia legislative history, the legislative history and practice, to print money, that joint resolution must be signed by two ten members of the Senate. In this instant case, they went for a single majority. A racist issue. Monetary policy affects the entirety of our country. So our law says that a vast majority member of our lawmaker should endorse the people's brand. In the instant case, they diametrically departed from established legislative practice and history. So the mayor has sufficient reason to blow the whistle. 
The other thing I want to draw your attention to is the second paragraph, the first line of Nyombi Tanga uh, says Lawrence, Nyombi uh, Lawrence's letter, right? Look at the second paragraph, the first line. What she says? She said, the statement you may embarrass me, my friend, so I will release you. Assuming if they want to be president, and the United States government say we're going to impose sanction on somebody in Liberia for a, a, a despicable conduct or for corruption, she will say, no, you're not imposing sanction because you'll be embarrassing my friends or my colleagues. Would that be her standard if she were to become president? God forbid. I mean, this yeah. woman is demonstrating uh, effort incompetence and is siding with corruption. It is okay. embarrassing. Okay. Uh, All uh, right. Gentlemen, gentlemen, before you move, before some... you move I understand. Let, let's move on to the last topic here because we're going to leave time for comments and hopefully a few calls. You want to say something yeah, real quick? Well, before we go forward, let me just make this. The truth here okay. is this. You ask a question and I answer the question. There are certain times okay. we are at liberty to speak as wide as we want to speak. But in this situation where you ask a specific question, I'll give you a specific answer. You That's asked correct. if it was right, it was if he needed protection. Yes, he needed protection, but I also will tell you, and I said it again, if you if you 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 you're working for an individual and you do that, you will lose your job. Then you will be like me. Who can who will not get employed by anybody because my mouth too sharp? I will say it as it is. That's why I don't seek employment for anybody. Josh, Josh, so, why are you trying to justify? You're trying to justify that I am not justifying anything. Josh, I'm, I'm telling you that. that you, you said, said that a man should value. Hold on. Josh, George, George, here is what we call a national consciousness. National yes. consciousness is when you put the interest of the country beyond your personal I interest. I force and foremost when it comes to that. You must be against corruption. Oh, if I, I speak against corruption, you will be I said, hold on. You, let me talk. <laughs> your time finish. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not defending yes, corruption. Yes, yes, yes. You explain here that the George Weah government circumvented established procedure. Okay. By, by going for a simple majority when yes. it comes to the passage of the the the, the, the measure to print yeah. new banknotes, yeah. they went into that. So basically, they did not even need people like John Bikanga Lawrence. Based on your yeah yeah, hold on. Hold on. So, 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 so you should not fire anybody for saying so speaking of. So you should not suspect on. anybody. For speaking of. Yeah, guess what? Now? They did not need John Bikanga Lawrence. They were there. How many? They are thirty. So hey, hold on now, Isaac. They did not need John Bikanga Lawrence. But the point here yes, is this. I am, before, let me establish this. I am against the printing of the money. I told Jerome here on Sunday or so ago that if before they print the money, they have to ensure that they put some strictures around the printing of the money or we wait. It is not a matter of must, okay? It's not a matter of must for us to print money now. I was looking at, I was just looking at the, a, a, a documentary on Congo. If you see the Congolese bank, bank notes, they are horrible looking and they're still using it. So there is no need for us to print any bank okay. notes right now. Okay, gentlemen, uh, we got 15 minutes here. Let's go to the last one and, and then we'll go back for a closing statement and then we'll leave room for a uh, comment. So directed to you, uh, to myself or to George. Let's look at uh, recently the president was dedicating the two South Field and he told the folks, ladies and gentlemen, forgive me if I'm always on the soccer field or always around soccer. <laughs> and some people saw that as a mere copa or waving the white flag that he has given up on the pressure by applying what brought him to this point. George, what you think about that statement? When George, we have said, I am not a politician. Okay. If you ask me, I think it's basically a lazy statement. One, I think also if he wants to play football, he owes nobody an apology. It's a physical activity he can get involved with. He owes nobody any apology. He owes nobody any explanation. For the thing, <laughs> the problem here is just do your job. When you do your job, you won't play golf, you won't swim, you won't fly, you won't do everything. We don't have a problem. But what we're interested in is making sure is we are interested in you doing your piece of job that you have to do. Now, if you abdicate your role as a president and surrender the powers of your office to your minister of state for presidential affairs and to your finance minister, and they're making fiscal policies and, and fiscal uh, 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 determination and, 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 and decisions, and, and 
the, 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 the minister of state is the one handling security and every other thing, firing and hiring and doing everything in government. And only thing you care about is the trappings of your office. Then we have, then you have the right, then you'll be forced to make such a statement. Because if you're doing your job, your job will speak for you. You see, the thing is, like I, I remember running into trouble with uh, with, with the past regime and, and Robert Salif in particular. And when he came and said he wanted to be a uh, senator, and I said, I said, I said he the, 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 the Liberian people owe him nothing, and he had done nothing to justify his 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 decision to ask the Liberian people to vote for him to become a senator, being the the the, the de facto president of the Republic of Liberia. He had failed in his primary responsibility and nobody's going to reward him but is doing his job he won't have to make this political statement or this statement oh you'll forgive me i'm i'm, I'm this is who i am is you're basically he's saying paraphrasing it's like i can't help you i have to play football oh no you ought to play football we respect the fact that you you play football because we know you're a footballer but we thank also you. want you to do your job if thank you do you, not do you, your job, you. Uh -huh. then you have to come and say something like this. Thank you. Uh, 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 Mr. Jackson, go ahead. You know, at the, at, at the risk of saying something positive about President Weah, let me see. You know, right now, it's, when you say positive thing about Weah, you get criticized, you get roundly condemned. <laughs> I think the statement Mr. Weah made was a truthful statement. If you... The man is basically saying to the Liberian people that I have a natural affection for this thing. This thing is part of my, my life. I find it irresistible. Every time I see the soccer, I want to touch it. You know, you, when you're giving people power, look for their truthfulness. Mr. Weir, in 2005, he made a truthful statement. In 2005, he was on a radio very tight talk show, something that they don't could not do and have not done. He, he, he spoke president then, the political officer of Mr. Samuel D. Twedir. Very robust guy. You just all over the place. We are graduated from high school. We are there. We are there. Trying to promote. We are. We are was on very, very tight 2005. He said, Let me be truthful to you people. I did not complete my high school when I was at uh, Well High School. I was in 11th grade. I started my sober career. Over the time, we have shown some degree. But here is the thing, though. Here is the thing. That's why when you see me insisting that people who go to public offices, they should show zero tolerance on corruption because the power associated with the presidency or with any power has a potential to corrupt people. This is an earnest job. We are in 2005 admitting that, look, I didn't graduate. Today, Dylan cannot even admit that he did not graduate. He had to last say, I graduated, I graduated. He cannot produce a valid wire certificate. You know what I'm saying? George is being truthful. I'm a human being. I left football. You it's are not. Amazing. You are not being factual. Are you saying now? Okay. No, no, George, interrupting me. Are you saying now the man should suppress the truthfulness of his genuine desire, his genuine liking for for soccer? Should he now offer an apology and miss the criticism that he receiving? George is being criticized every day for playing football. He should say to people, say, look, I think of being, I have some natural liking here. This is my short form. My people, y'all forgive me. Y'all bear with me. I have, I can't resist it. Now, we have to now say, okay, Mr. President, we're reaching with you, but if you're going to play your football or before you play your football, could you please take seriously the issue of the presidency? You have work to do. Okay. <laughs> That's what I remember now, saying, okay. truthful. <laughs> my turn, my turn, guys. Thank you very much for that. The reason, the reason I asked the question is because Liberians are hypocrites. We all read and we all know what it takes to run an office. And I just wanted to bring out uh, this picture. That's Barack Obama. Everywhere the guy when he had a pair of extra sneakers, he was addicted to playing basketball. And in the White House, like they say here, they said in Obama's White House, basketball was taken very seriously. Yeah. He's an athlete. He brought the University of Connecticut girls basketball team to the White House to congratulate them. And he took them to the back and challenged them to a basketball game. He brought yeah. everybody that could play everywhere he went. So for Liberians to say by the president playing basketball, in fact, where he made the announcement, dedicating a field, that's his presidential duty. He was at work. 
He was not at a bar drinking. This man was at work. And he told them, ladies and gentlemen, when you see me out there interacting with children, with people on the street, that's my job. That's me. That's who I am. Intrinsically, that's who I am. And you see, it, 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 just so you that were around, Charles Walker Bronski, every time you saw him, he was always with a legalistic, he was always a lawyer, he was always judicial in everything. That was his, that was his, his, his that was him. Mm -hmm. And we cannot blame him for that. But anyway, before we go to our closing comment, let's wait. Let that read some comment. Let that read. Yeah, go, go ahead. Read. Now, can I ask you, Jerome? Jerome, can I ask you something else? I'm not scared. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. As a, as a, as a, can I say something? Jackson, give me one yes. minute. Go, go ahead, George. Can I say something that I have not said? Yes. Yeah, I have seen Dylan's senior class picture. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. He did not go to school. Listen, he did not go to school, right? But I have seen Dylan senior class picture at Wareheadstone. So whatever St. Peter Clever or whatever else, I have seen. I personally, George, today, okay. I have okay. seen. We produce that. We have another show for that. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, I'll, I'll produce it. it. I'll produce it on Sunday. I'll produce it on Sunday. No, I mean, you know, the thing, the thing is, I will produce it on Sunday, Isaac. No, I'll I'll produce, you should also produce it. Not, the, 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 the program, the program, the program, the graduation program. If he's a senior, you gotta have a graduation program. Oh, I, 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 I didn't listen. I did not okay. say I saw a graduation. Wait, 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 wait. Program. I said, I saw. Oh, we want to go to our comment. We want to. Yeah, we want to go to our comment. Jassy, go ahead, real quick. Let's go to the comments. I'm not interested in the law uniform. That is not my issue yet. I say he should produce a valid wire certificate that will qualify anybody to be a bona fide high school graduate. That is my point. Right. They put make on the on the sport team. Somebody like me, I have a natural liking for chess. You can't in my house house right now. Go in my room. I got over five chess books. I play chess every day. That was okay, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson, let's go to the comments so you can respond. Let's go to the comment. This one from uh, um, Mr. Tula. You want to read the comments? Yeah, uh, yeah I will read the comments. Isaac oh. just basically degraded a female senator. That was being misogynistic. Oh, come on, George. <laughs> let, let go to, George. Let's go to the comment. Okay, okay. Isaac just basically <laughs> degraded, <laughs> degraded a female senator to being supported by sugar daddies. Isaac will have Let's to go. prove what he said. These egotistical men, narcissistic men, must be checked. <laughs> Isaac, you go ahead. They don't, ahead. They don't have young relative trouble tonight in Isaac Jackson Hansel. I think Jackson has something personal against that too. Uh, Dylan, be careful with Isaac Jackson. He jealous of you because God has placed you above him. Uh, he's just a third grade student, but he he more than the president. Jerome Gaiman, stop making <laughs> stop speaking uh, nonsense. Uh, that justification is a lie. This <laughs> this is a lazy argument, Mister Gaiman. Jackson is jealous of Dylan. My man, Jackson, you're looking for a favor from George Weir to retain your job in England, G Great Britain, but you lie. What is your obsession with Dillon? I mean, yeah, Jackson just turned up the whole conversation to that. Uh, what is your obsession with Dillon? Isaac, you are very childish in intellectual discussion. President Weir, gift is soccer. Everyone knows that anybody can take that for him. We are talking about his lack of leadership ability to lead a nation. Do your job. Uh, you really believe that the that Isaac's purpose on the show can be best. I really believe rather that Isaac's purpose on the show can best be described as an exercise in show off. <laughs> Good job, Judge Cannon Tule. Uh Yumbly, I mean Dylan and Yumbly really take trouble tonight in Isaac's hands. Okay, I think. Okay, no, it's the same thing. Uh, okay, let, let, let me let, let me take this from here, uh, Mr. Mr. Tule. Uh, I'd like to begin with the name. The name here is okay. Uh, before we go to our clip, our closing statement, Mr. Mr. Jackson, you want to respond to a few of those before we go to closing? You see, you see the, the trouble in, in, in our country, and, and and my friend George was reading the comments, right? Yes. 
and, and I know the strategy associated with people reading comments sometimes there's a tendency for them to pick and choose some of the comments they like they like they, they read the one they like and I know that I'm not casting any expression on him but I know that it's a strategy in but well, I wasn't even the one hold up disclaimer I wasn't even the one that selected the comments in the first place I read yeah, everything I'm that came saying, on the screen I'm yeah, saying this in passing yes I'm saying this in passing but here is it I do not have anything personal against uh, what I've done the fact that uh, Mr. Allen was a sugar daddy is public record. They got two children. All right. The man is older in age. He was a younger lady then. What do you call that? That's well, not me. public knowledge. So that, that is one aspect. The issue with Mr. Yeah. Dillon mm -hmm. is also public record that Mr. Dillon has been making pretenses about him being some quote unquote activist, a genuine activist when he was working alone with somebody who was defending the gruesome murder of an entire family. Mr. T.C. Gu, he worked for T.C. Gu. He was a special assistant. They defended the murder of Samuel Say, Doki Ho family. They defended the torture of, uh, uh, how you call him, uh, uh, Gonglo. They defended the torture of Hassan Belete. And the records are there. T.C. Gu was the Solicitor General defending all the SSS of the Taylor regime. Dylan was a special assistant. It is not personal thing. It's historical facts. Fundamental true, objective fact. And that man, even if you look at Dylan's CV, he, he wrote it there, he said, I was paying attention to T.C. Gu. These are the things that T.C. Gu did. I, I help him in doing that. So, nobody should say I have personal issue. If Dylan produces his, his wire certificate, the issue of the high school building, I close that case. But okay. my dear is my thing, though. Yes, right, time, time is against us. Here is my thing, though. Here is my thing, though. Nobody. High school re requirement, high school de degree is not a requirement for you to be senator. So there was absolutely no need for Dillon to lie. If you Google people who lie about the credential, even if they reach the pinnacle of power, there is a tendency for them to recluse them from those jobs. It's all, the, all around the world. In Nigeria, it happened. Even in our own country, it happened. The only okay. thing is people are now researching the man. If you research the man, you will know that the man is fake. Mr. Oh, Mr. Oh. Jackson, thank you very much. We'll go to closing statement at this point because we're very close. We got another show coming at six o'clock. George Tula, go ahead with your closing statement. Yeah, before my closing statement, I have to say something. Okay. I said Delon, my point, my point about Delon earlier, and I will say it again. I said he's a maverick. And I said there are other people that have been great innovators, great reformers who did not quote unquote have the credentials of western uh, something you're talking western western civilization you're talking about you're talking about uh, uh the present president who went to school online they didn't sit in a classroom you know and we know people getting all the way to doctor degree and not doing the coursework so that one is just a simple thing you're online you can get anybody you can you can you can you can contract anybody to do your coursework and it is once it's you is you it, no matter the person have their signing credentials they can sign in from anywhere. Only, only in schools that are only certain teachers that I know would will go into the metadata to see the origin of a particular coursework. Most people will not even bother going into because they don't even know how to go in to see the metadata to find out where that coursework originated from. So they just grade it as it comes into their place. Only certain people with certain capacity knows where to go and look to see the metadata about particular data that comes into their their, 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 their their inbox, where it originated from. That one is special knowledge, they just leave it. But the thing here is, the thing here is this, with with with, 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 with Dillon and, and, and with the CPP ticket, the CPP ticket, I said it was Joe Borkai, who for me is the front runner on the CPP ticket. And I said Ellis Cummings would be good as a vice presidential candidate not Yuri Cummings. And I believe that in order for Liberia to change, we need a leadership with ideology and discipline. In the, in, to encapsulate that, I talked about somebody who has integrity, somebody who is honest, and somebody who is accountable. And to land, when it comes to women, as a Jackson, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. In other words, when we are talking sometimes we we kind of we we we, we kind of we kind of self censor self regulate ourselves in making certain statements. I will say this that <clears throat> you myself will go ahead and log ahead every time because we hold certain ideologies different to one another. But when it comes to women, I hold women sacrosanct. 
even if I disagree with Madame Sally, there are choice words that I can use to describe my disagreement. The, instead of going into the person's life, whether the person was sugar daddy or, or had sugar daddy, and what I think that was that was wrong for you. Or, or she's the political leader of the political party that I subscribe to. To respond to her, I mean, to refer to her in such a manner, I think was degrading on her person. Forget about her office, just as a woman. Because guess what? Sugar daddy thing is not strange in our country. So I was calling somebody a recipient of the la guest of a sugar daddy would not change the environment our country is in right now. Uh, she had you all. You also agree that she have children. Okay, she have developed. She she had offspring from her relationship with the individual. Let's give women the respect. We can still talk about our political things without coming to the person's personal life to talk about who they slept with, who they didn't sleep with. Because <clears throat> in life, in life. Women will sleep with people. It's just true about life. Whether they sleep with 100, some will sleep with a million, some will sleep with one. It doesn't matter. The fact, it doesn't take away from who they are as a woman. A woman okay, is okay. a woman. Her okay, choice so is act, re re reduce her or improve or increase her stature as an individual. So I think you were wrong for saying that. And I think you owe the senator an apology for, for referring to her in such a degrading manner. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Jackson, go ahead. Saying to my friend and reminding him that the law is based on the notion of morality. And so when he comes here and he found no trouble with Mr. Dillon lying about his credential, then I'm, 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 I'm surprised. I don't know what Bible he reads because the Bible also teaches us that thou shalt not lie. How can you be defending somebody who lied publicly about his credential? And you say you want to be taken seriously and people should trust you. You can't be an authentic person. Okay? The other thing is, he just said to you that sugar daddy is not a strange thing in Liberia. If sugar daddy is not a strange thing in Liberia, it's an acceptable thing, why are you finding it offensive for me to talk about it? Are you telling me I should be the one to hide people history? If you have people history, you know how you are described. You are a revisionist. I'm not going to pass for a revisionist. A Madame Yomi Kanga Lauren has a history. She will own up to her history and explain her own history. That will be part of her story. People explain their story all around. Born naked, General Born naked. He goes and explains his story. There are people who have terrible history. They are proud of their history. They explain their history. I will not say to cover up Mananyombi Kanga history because her history is out of tarnish or is you got, check up. You, you, got one minute. you got one minute remaining. The other thing I would say again very quickly is on the issue of the CTP, and this is my, my take home point, the Liberian people will not take the CTP to be a credible alternative until and unless the CPP demonstrates convincingly that it's zero tolerance on corruption. When the CPP wallows, ooze, and snooze with corrupt individual people with morally depressed CV, the CPP is letting all of us down. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. And we're concerned about a better Liberia. Thank you very much, Mr. Jackson. Thank you very much, Mr. Tule. Uh, my closing uh, parting words here. First of all, uh, I think I want to agree with Mr. Jackson here. That is that the CDC as it stands and the trajectory that's that the trajectory of CDC now. I see no reason, I see nobody in the CPP, whether it is the Dillon Boyka combination coming back out to beat George Weir and, and our Vice President Taylor is impossible, it's not going to happen. The Liberian people have seen better. Uh, as far as the firing of the House, the Senate, the Chief of Staff. I gave, if someone in my office, my chief of staff in my office, tells my funder or tell the public that Mr. Gamer is corrupt, just his proximity to me, to my office, carries a lot of weight. And I think this young man needs the protection. As far as online education is concerned, Mr. Tule, I want to, I want to disagree with you a little bit because I did some public policy courses at Harvard, okay? And we did it online. I had cohorts. We had actual people that were watching and monitoring what we were doing. 
So it is not that you can just go ahead and hire someone to do, unless, like I said, depending on the school. So I, I, I differ with you a little bit on that. As far as the president is concerned, I want the people to understand that everything the president does, the president goes swim, they say it's unprecedented. Then we show John F. Kennedy and the rest of the president swimming. It's a family pastime. The president plays sports, they say it's unprecedented. We show, so all of these things have precedence. It shows us that this man that we are accusing for being uninformed and not cultured, in reality, he is more cultured than those of us who are actually doing the criticism. Mr. Jackson, I want to thank you very much for your input. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Uh, Mr. Tule, as usual, we look forward to your vibrant uh, analysis on issues next year, next week. We are going to be right here, same time, simply discussing issues that affect our country. Thank you very much. As usual, when we are parting, we have a word that says, we are all Liberian. Let's go. Let's see what our son says. Hopefully, we all be back in next week. God's blessing. We all love you, man.